This is a 1948-53 frame that I'm modifying for my brother. But there's some things to, uh, you can um, learn about it. Uh, this, this is a 85 uh, front end, Dodge Diplomat front end, like uh, I've shown in other videos. This is uh, just me starting to weld it up on here. Um, you know, just getting it all tied in. Now, the, the thing is, is the weight of the motor is on the cross member. The truck itself is basically laying its arms across the cross member and be being dragged along like a wheelbarrow running backwards. I mean, uh, so the frame's not taking the, the brunt of the uh, engine. You know, the original frame is not taking uh, the brunt of a V8. This cross member is. And these are the towers of those um, front ends that would always be accused of leaning in and throwing the alignment off uh, the uh, pursuit vehicles of the cops, cop cars. Well, we're probably the first ones to really notice it. But see that extra piece of steel right there uh, in the 80s, I believe the early 80s, they started throwing that patch piece in there to try and give it more rigid uh, performance so that this wouldn't lean in. And if, if you don't, if you've never seen one of these all apart like this, um, let me, uh, let me walk in here and yeah, that truck has the same front end. Uh, let me come up here and grab the part that actually goes on there. Uh, So it shows you, it's a, it's a shroud. It's sheet metal. It's hard to hold the phone and do this at the same time, but I should be able to pull it off. This is, this is the piece right here. And it goes right over it, right over the tower. So you can see how it being four bolts, bolting it on, four bolt holes. And this going over the top of it um, that's uh, the hole for the shock but it's uh, it you know when you get the weight on the tire then it would lean in like that and this uh, that poor bastard in the early versions would kind of lean in especially in a I guess in a high pursuit chase so uh, I uh, Throw all this steel on there and this quarter inch plate. What I do with it, you can see it's uh, kind of a trapezoid here. And I put that on here, it gets welded to the frame and gets welded to the back of this tower. And it sure as hell is not bending, moving, flexing, or anything by the time I'm done with it. And, uh, and I feed some wires through it, but you can kind of see where, maybe that's a better view of how I handle that. And then I, I box in, uh, the back of the cross member or the back of the frame, uh, to the, the cross member. That's what I do there for the diplomat. And this, this back here, this is where the back of the cab is connected that's where the front of it is and what that does is the the cab actually acts as a cross member uh tightening up the the flexibility of the frame uh irregular roads back in the early days of the 40s uh was really hell on a lot of the old trucks so the the, the c c channel frame was designed to flex to move with all the potholes and try and act as a a form of, of shock shock absorber in itself that's not really true today these nice uh roads are asphalt but that road out there on my property that it's in front of my property used to be a dirt road until 1970. so this uh this cross section right here cross member here for the uh the, the rear springs and here's where the rear axle is and it's the front of the rear spring it was uh it was kind of hell on this part of the frame right here because a lot of the the flexing of the rear axle 
hitting the holes and carrying a load. Uh, you know, it was firmed up right here with the cab. But then there was this gap. And you can actually see the, the paint that got between the gap of the, of the bed of the truck and the cab when people would, you know, repaint their trucks uh, just to try and make it look nice again. You can see where the paint came up. And that was, that's pretty much where the bed starts, where the cab starts, ends. Uh, and um, anyway, uh, so the result is that usually right here or right here is a crack from all the hard work that that uh, rear axle is doing. And on this one, let's see, I can't get any light on this. Uh, I really can't see anything on here. Let me dust it up so I can see my finger tracks. Uh, but that's where you look for for any cracks. I don't have my glasses on. So if you guys saw one, hey, tell me in the comments. But here's one that I know does exist. And that's it right there. And that's what they look like. The they, When they welded this one here, they really dug it out and left it kind of bare through here. They didn't, they didn't uh, do an amazing job of welding right there. And uh, so this, this flex went all the way up in, into here and it cracked it. I've already flipped this frame up to see if it's cracked because you kind of, whenever you think of, uh, uh, you know, breaks or fractures like that, you think like a pretzel, you know, it's going to break in two spots, you know, across from each other. You know, it's like, well, if that was broke there, then it might be broke over here like a pretzel because it's a twist. It's twisted. If you grab a pretzel and you twist it, it's going to, it's going to break, um, you know, opposite sides. But this one, that's the only crack I found. And it's, uh, that's typically where the, the quote unquote sagging occurs. Uh, I, I say quote unquote, because, uh, a lot of people like to criticize the Dodge frames for, uh, sagging, uh, in between the cab and the, the bed. Uh, you know, <laughs> all frames do this. All ladder bar frames uh, will run into that problem uh, somewhere. And that's where they want to point it out for, for Dodge. I've never seen any, anything that's really critical to the point where you got to trash a frame over it. Uh, you can see crappy repairs and that sort of thing. You know, somebody just tries to weld a, a bead right there but what i do is i just i put a plate i put a triangular plate right here and then and then i'll add a a brace um on the inside you know cross it on my truck in there i actually have a 10 gauge on the outside of this and 14 gauge on the inside so it actually allows it to flex a little bit not a lot but that was for my race truck where I was going 150 miles an hour um, out of Bonneville. So this, this frame's not getting that. This frame is just going to get uh, bracing at key points. And that's it because this is, uh, I'm not going to, it probably never even hit the freeway for God's sake. It's probably a parade runner. But this is the guy that's going to be driving this around. Um, I think he has no intention of taking it on the freeway. But these are the cross members. For the bed and the wood, you know, bolts into these holes. And this is only here for uh, showing you how this this cross member, this part of the cross member, actually goes up to the height of the bed. And uh, and then these are the rest of this this one. That helps. That helps. That helps. And that helps. And this goes a little further out. This one doesn't belong here. So this, uh, this right here is just part of my jig to hold the frame. So this gets cut out. I just uh, throw that on there so I can spin this thing on my homemade uh, rotisserie. And you can see where the boards would go across this. But those, these won't be used. He's, uh, he's going to make his own flatbed to go on there. And, but my um, point that I was leading up to is... If you put that plate right here, it's, 
you have the space. That's how much space. This right here is how much space you have up and down. So you can throw a nice big fat plate in there and you're not going to create any problems uh, for, a, for a standard bed. Because you got an air gap there to work with. And it's kind of needed. Uh, and I would say that it's not you know, critical for every build. But for this one it is. Uh, and that's, uh, that's all I wanted to cover on that so far. So, cross members are going to get put away. Um, it's going to get the springs from a standard truck, the, uh, that, the springs that came with this truck. And then, uh, I'm not sure what rear end he's going to use. But he, you know, his his plan to have this front end means that he's going to have to do some, uh, a little bit of work back there to, to get it to, to all come to the same height that he wants and to set that front end to the height it's supposed to be. And the, the way I set this into the frame, the way I cut into the frame uh, actually um, is going to put it at stock height. So... You know, he may not have, if he's going to go with the original rear end back there, which most people don't, uh, they go with a Jeep Cherokee uh, rear end or variants of that. Um, but using the stock springs should all give him the, the same ride height, the original ride height. Uh, and the original ride height would, from the ground to the top, is usually two feet. Uh, that's usually where it ends up with the stock uh with a stock setup. So that's uh, that's all I got about that. Uh, if you go to the website <clears> on <throat> uh, the Dodge Pilot House or the pilothouse.com, pilothouse-house.com, uh, you can find all kinds of stuff and you'll find, uh, you know, a build sheet like this. Uh, let's see, I can get the shaft off of it. But the build sheets tell you how high everything's supposed to be, what the dimensions are. And I'm referencing, referencing this thing all the time um, to get what I need. So um, you can find this too. And it'll, it'll give you the, you know, where to measure for the 108 uh, wheelbase, uh, the, the height of the frame, uh, that sort of thing. And, I mean, they're old trucks, and they're fun. Some people are going to follow it perfectly. Others are going to treat it as a suggestion. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's what it is. And if everybody's going, what the hell is that? That's a 1938 uh, uh, Humpback. And that's a different uh, series truck. Uh, but it's... Uh, it's something I've always kind of wanted. <laughs> so I found one, I bought it, and it's here. And it's uh, sitting right here, waiting in line. And uh, this one's been waiting for a bit. And that's what I'm working on today. All right, man. Have a good one.